Welcome back all Foxy Games UK new and existing subscribers. Your support for this channel is absolutely mind-blowing. I thank you. It is Tuesday, November 12. I'm Fox, your reliable source of aggregated video game news, speculation and rampant rumour. News source links usually available in the video description when and where applicable in today's video. So a few days ago, some images of a new PlayStation 5 cartridge patent was revealed by Let's Go Digital, incidentally the very same outlet that revealed the PlayStation 5 dev kit renders of which has since been confirmed to be accurate by a number of independent developers. Well, Let's Go Digital has provided even more info and renders of exactly what these patented proprietary cards or cartridges actually are. Initially, the new Sony game cartridge was patented in Brazil, leading many to speculate the cart is intended for extended SSD storage for PlayStation 5, some even speculating these cards could be for a undisclosed Sony portable system. The patent was indeed registered by Sony Interactive Entertainment in the INPI, that's Instituto Nacional de Propiedade Industrial in Brazil. Specifically, the patent which was published on November 5th, 2019 refers to a game cartridge that fulfills the design of configuration applied to slash in data recording and storage equipment. The design patent was submitted by Yuji Morisawa, the senior art director at Sony Interactive Entertainment. Now, ironically, the INPI was also the very same body within the design patent for the now confirmed PS5 dev kit images, which were submitted by the same individual. Now, back in June 2019, a similar patent was issued for a cartridge based system and was widely reported by a number of high profile tech sites, only for the reveal to be really bogus. The cartridge was actually intended for the Sony Toyo or Toyo, an interactive toy platform intended for children. Though this this new patent seemingly refers to a completely separate entity, a more traditional cartridge that slots into an external port. While the patent doesn't detail the use of the device, there's really only a few possibilities for its use. So this is totally unrelated to a portable device, if it is indeed, could it be that this cartridge might be used as some sort of extended storage for the PlayStation 5 given that Sony's next generation PlayStation has been revealed to use a low level SSD. Now extending the storage of the PS5 through traditional methods, example tried and tested sluggish motor based hard drives or SSDs would result in slower performance, though maybe this cartridge is actually some kind of proprietary removable storage. And therein lies my biggest concern with this thing being proprietary. Remember how expensive those PlayStation Vita memory cards were? Some would argue that the Sony Interactive Entertainment comparatively overpriced memory storage cards really as one of the main reasons PlayStation Vita failed to take off. Let's Go Digital has created mock-up renders of the PlayStation cartridge to illustrate really what these cartridges might actually look like should they hit retail. Now the images look pretty uninspiring it has to be said, like something that already got carried over from the late 90s, much like the slimmer version of an old cartridge based, you know, system one might insert into the original Game Boy portable device or PlayStation 1's memory card slots. Sony may be embracing SSD storage cards for PS5, not least because, as previously mentioned, standard SSD and motor based hard drives just aren't going to cut it next gen, and it offers a way for Sony to offer, really, one would hope, more affordable SSD storage upgrade solutions as and when required in the future by PlayStation 5 users. Now, the recent SSD card design renders look extremely close to the images included in the original patent listing, and Let's Go Digital has reimagined the look of the cartridge with Additional texture, variable storage sizes ranging from 1 terabyte to 3 terabytes. I mean, 3 terabytes has got to be pricey though, right? And of course, Let's Go Digital has even included the renowned Sony PlayStation trademark branding on the storage card itself. Now, PlayStation Universe, where the bulk of this piece was sourced, has suggested that, to their eyes at least, the renders look perfectly plausible, far as extending SSD storage for the highly anticipated PlayStation 5 launching holiday 2020. So, what are you thinking? Would you be okay with additional storage for PlayStation 5? Exactly how much are you prepared to pay for, say, an entry-level 1TB card? Sound off in the comments. Now, before we get into proceedings, for anyone still on the fence as to whether Death Stranding is 
indeed worth your time and money, check out the latest episode, 122, of the Gamer Couch podcast where we discuss all the latest PlayStation 5 news and engage in a spoiler-free debate. Is Death Stranding greatness? It was certainly a real good time, even if I was a little potty-mouthed, so be warned. And in other news sourced via GameIndustry.biz, PlayStation 4's console-exclusive Death Stranding has debuted at number two in the UK retail charts. It's the second biggest exclusive and the second biggest new IP released this year behind another PS4 exclusive Days Gone which was released back in April. Though Hideo Kojima's new title sold 36% fewer units than Days Gone did at launch. It's the first new game from Kojima since the release of Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain which arrived in September 2015 and was the most successful Metal Gear Solid launch to date. The arrival of Death Stranding means that Luigi's Mansion 3 takes a tumble down the charts. Nintendo's latest Switch game falls from number 2 to number 4 with a 59% drop in sales week on week. Now we know that title's an evergreen like most Nintendo titles. And Call of Duty Modern Warfare holds its number 1 spot for a third consecutive week. Now Death Stranding's creator Hideo Kojima has seemingly disturbed the hornet's nest when he suggested the North American audience has been the game's biggest critic and that Death Stranding is a cut above what Western markets are used to, meaning run and gun, first person shooters and typically mindless action games. In an interview with Italian publication TGCom24 published on the release day, Hideo Kojima had the chance to discuss the early reception of critics. While the average score was quite high, there were some low scores as well coming mostly from US publications. Now, Kojima attributed this to their preference for first person shooter games whereas Death Stranding in his own words flies higher. Here's the Kojima quote that seemingly set a few people off. I must say that the game received rave reviews especially in Europe and Japan. Here in the United States though, we had stronger criticisms. Perhaps it's a difficult game to understand for a certain type of critic and audience. Americans are great fans of first person shooters and Death Stranding isn't one. It flies higher. Always try to create new things and disputes and discussions are fine but it must be said that the Italians or the French have a different artistic sensibility that allows them to appreciate this kind of very original product, not only in video games but also in cinema. Ooh, okay. So Kojima has described it as a strand game, whereas pretty much every shooter and action game in general are stick games. Death Stranding has combat, of course, but it's far from the main activity in the game as far as the vast majority of other releases. With regard to the direction that Kojima Productions wants to steer the studio towards, he mentioned straddling the line between independent and AAA game productions, mainly because this allows him to still leave his own mark. Kojima went on to say, it's a bit of a challenge between independence and blockbusters. I want to be in the middle and take the positive things of both these worlds. It happens that some very authorial games are sold maybe only in Japan and leave with a low budget, but when they try to propose themselves abroad to become international products, they lose their soul a little as the creative director's imprint slowly disappears to suit the audience. The larger the project becomes, the more the creative face disappears, which also applies to Western games. Now in fairness to our beloved Americans, I feel that anyone from anywhere in the world who is mostly into fast paced, action heavy, highly stylized but light on substance video games may not be into something as profound as Death Stranding. Not saying you have to be highly intelligent to understand or appreciate Hideo Kojima's games, but it certainly helps. You may have heard Death Stranding is not for everybody, but I disagree. I think it is for everybody. I think you only need to embrace it for what it is. Arguably, Death Stranding's graphics are far, far beyond what is expected of this current generation of hardware. Now, bear in mind the vanilla PS4 launched six years ago, and yet it's, it is producing near photorealistic visuals, a testament to the magnificent Decima engine created by Horizon Zero Dawn Studio Guerrilla Games though no doubt perfected by Kojima Productions, which should benefit all future titles. Horizon Zero Dawn 2 springs to mind using the Decima engine. Indeed, I concur with the sentiment that Death Stranding is the benchmark against every AAA launch era PS5 title should be compared. It is simply stunning to behold. And having invested more than 25 hours into Death Stranding, I can honestly say it is quite possibly the best looking game of this entire generation and personally for me, my favorite game of 2019 so far. But is it game of the year material? 
what say you? Go ahead, sound off, share your thoughts and opinions on today's news because that unfortunately brings us to the end of another video. But let's continue the discussion cordially in the comments. And for all your current and next-gen news updates, rumor and rampant speculation, why not hit the like button, spread the word and yes, keep it locked to Foxy Games UK. Remember, relevant links where applicable can be found in this video's description. Subscribe to Foxy Games UK. Remember to hit the notification bell so you never miss content. Thumbs up if you like it here and help us reach more like-minded gamers simply by sharing this video. Consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon and or grab yourself a Foxy Games UK branded t-shirt or hoodie available in various colours and designs. You'll find both links in the video's description. I truly appreciate all of your support. And that concludes our time together on this Tuesday. It was certainly great hanging out and until the next video, remember, play games, not corporations.